Hi guys, Cool Dribbling here. I'm still sick, so this won't be a really long video, but I'm definitely going to get... There's so many things I want to talk about with regards to abuse, victim blaming, uh, abusive systems, oppression, all those different things, whistleblowers. Um, all these different things are really, really important to talk about, and it's all kind of blown up. So I saw it blow up yesterday, and I thought I have to make this video today. But don't worry, I'll get into this in more detail, every little bit. Uh, we'll probably have some content for weeks to come based on that. So the latest thing that we know from uh, Harry's book Spare is that Harry is saying that William physically attacked him, physically assaulted him, um, knocked him to the floor. Um, Harry didn't fight back, although allegedly William was saying, hit me, you know, you want to hit me. Um, and then he told Harry that he was sorry about it. And then he said, don't tell Meghan. This was in Harry and Meghan's house. So, I mean, big red flags here. I mean, I just want to say that I don't want to get all into this completely until I've got the book because I want to get Harry's actual words from the book before I, you know, say anything about it. But what I do want to say is that I'm absolutely disgusted by the victim blaming because take away celebrity, take away who these people are. What we are having is a, a victim of abuse, psychological, emotional, and it seems physical as well. And this is documented. You know, we know for a fact, we know the system abused Diana, right? We know that Harry is being abused. We know that Meghan is being abused by the media and probably the system and potentially the family. But there's there's so much to corroborate this. And so many of the journalists know this as well. So this thing about um, William's temper coming out, I'm always very hesitant. I don't want to be putting out what I think. Uh, I want to be analysing what we know and what's been said. But I have worried about that because I have seen articles in the past about William having a temper and shouting at people and... Now all this stuff has come out with Harry, a lot of journalists or people in the media are saying actually yeah they did know about that for a while and they were brief not to say anything about it. There's there's so much of that that it has to be true, you know, and it also it completely backs up everything Meghan and Harry have said about the fact that the media are in a contract where they're not allowed to say anything bad about the direct royals, you know, so like Charles and William. But what we're looking at here is we are looking at a whistleblower and an abuse victim coming forward and telling their story. And the BBC, and the ITV has done it today, uh, this morning as well, but the BBC has absolutely disgusted me. I'm stunned by what I'm seeing. So they got a royal expert on the BBC. This is a man who's come forward about abuse he suffered and how he was physically assaulted by his older brother. This is not when they were children as well. I'm seeing a lot of people saying, oh, that's just kids. Kids fight, siblings fight. Yeah, they do. These are adult men and there's a power imbalance. This was something that was done secretly. It was done while Meghan wasn't present. Um, it was done to intimidate. And then it was tried to be covered up. William tried to have it covered up. So it was completely intimidation. The way BBC News covered this, it was straight on the news. Uh, and what they said was that uh, their royal correspondent said that Harry was now dissipating public support and he was airing grievances against his family. This is so dangerous and I talk about this from the lens of ordinary people who aren't in the public eye who are in abusive family systems or oppressive systems. The message that's being put out by the BBC, which we pay taxes for, right, we pay our licence fee, is that if an abuse victim speaks out about abuse and the people above them are more powerful, or it's people in their family, then they are in the wrong for coming forward about their abuse. The BBC has learned nothing from Jimmy Savile, right? They have instantly gone to protecting power. It doesn't matter that, first of all, they need to be treating this not as celebrity gossip, but this is an abuse allegation. This is an assault. They are absolutely, they've absolutely disgusted me. They've also said, you know, oh, it's a family fallout. They've described it as a family fallout. I don't know what sort of families these people are in, but I think a lot of people are outing themselves as being part of abusive families or not being able to understand abuse. It's not normal. Arguments, yeah, sure. And, and especially, I think, with the royal family, it's different because I don't blame them completely because it's they haven't created this system for themselves. I do understand they, they're born in. And I think that when it comes to someone like William, I think it's a case of somebody that's also been abused and traumatised by the system, but has now assimilated in and it seems to have become an abuser himself, as often happens in abuse. You know, I've got a video coming which could not be more apt, really, now about the scapegoat and golden child dynamic with Harry and William, which seems to be playing out here. We have the way that children in a family where there's a scapegoat and a golden child are the whole idea of putting one on this idealised pedestal and the other one taking all the family burdens is that the children don't unite because they're stronger together. It creates animosity between them. It assimilates the golden child in. He becomes or they become more loyal to the power structure that actually abused him and the scapegoat. 
and the cycle continues and the thing what we see with scapegoats is that although they go through worse in terms of feeling second best being blamed for things um in some ways they're more lucky because they're the ones that often get out they're not so tied in it's difficult for the golden child as well and it's, it's very rare in a system where you'll see a golden child and a scapegoat unite but in families where that does happen that's where the change happens uh, it's it's a rare and beautiful thing if a golden child and a scapegoat manage to stay together but you know the whole point is that they're groomed to be against each other they're groomed to be in competition because if the pair of them had you know come together then it threatened the whole system so it is a tragedy but that doesn't absolve william of what he's done as an adult it really doesn't adult children of these systems who then choose to further inflict pain on others they have my sympathy for their childhood and they do have my sympathy in that and I try and understand it but that's no excuse as an adult what you do as an adult you have a choice whether you continue an abuse system and it seems that uh, William has chosen to to re-victimize others you know this idea of a family fallout I have a younger brother okay we argue but we also love each other very dearly and I just want to say I have never as an adult physically assaulted Dan and then said don't tell anyone about that the fact that I physically assaulted you He's never done that to me. People will say, oh, you know, that's because you're a boy and a girl. No, it's not normal. You know, people are saying, oh, it was just a fight. It was a tussle between brothers. It wasn't though, was it? This wasn't a fight. This was a situation where Harry couldn't win. And we see this all the time in abuse, emotional abuse. This happens to the scapegoat. They're in an impossible situation because Harry can't win whatever happens. He's being goaded to fight back. And this, please apply this to, to abuse dynamics in in your life you know if you're from an abusive situation i'm really sorry if you are but i'm also glad that you're here because you obviously have the knowledge of these systems and you will gain power from this knowledge and you will be one of the lucky ones because you understand it and you can get away and you won't repeat it but harry was in a situation where he couldn't do anything because if he were to fight back as william wanted because everything was so skewed in william's favor it would have been reported that harry was unstable that he was violent and it would have further scapegoated him so fighting back wasn't an option for harry if he had done that he would have fallen into the trap he knows, he's in a system where they know that William will be covered for. And in abusive families, sometimes uh, the family will be complicit. They won't all be openly abusive. But the priority in an abusive family is the reputation of the family. So they will disguise any abuse that happens. They will minimise any abuse that happens. So often the person that's most abused, the scapegoat, when they talk about this, the family will come together and they will say, no, no, our family's fine. There's, the, there's a problem with them. And we have history with this family doing this. We've seen it happen to Diana, right? This is documented. We know that's how the family works. And it's not all the family's fault because they're not a normal family. You know, they're not just deciding to inflict this on their children. They are born into a situation which is it's awful. It's very much like a cult. And I have likened it to the Westboro Baptist Church. It is very much like a cult. But the way that they were talking about this on the news disgusted me. There would have been so many victims watching that and feeling afraid to speak. Because Harry is now being afraid. Being, watch how Harry is now being framed as abusive for talking about abuse. Apparently to these people, because it is victim blaming and it affects every single viewer, if you speak out about your abuse, then you are victimizing your abuser. That's that's the mentality. And why? Because William's more powerful, right? And this is the BBC doing this. I'm absolutely disgusted. They had two people on, on the BBC News. Uh, Grant Harold, who is apparently a British etiquette expert, not an abuse expert, clearly. And Emily Nash. Uh, Emily Nash was a royal editor to Hello Magazine. I don't know how they're They've been brought in. This is a situation of abuse, press abuse, family abuse and assault. And they've been brought in on this with no knowledge whatsoever to, to spew their misinformation. They immediately side with William. You know, one of them said, uh, Grant Harold said, I don't personally see how you can come back from that because if it was my family member saying that, I'd be angry. So are you people openly admitting that you're abusers and you support abuse because you'd be more angry? You're less angry about the fact that somebody committed an assault you're more angry about the person who was assaulted talking about the fact they were assaulted. That's the hill you guys are going to die on. And for what? Uh, also, we had, oh, his father's coronation is literally in a few months, as if Harry is the reason for the discord. Like, oh, Harry's causing such drama. No, I'm sorry. The person who caused, if we are to believe what's said by Harry, at the moment, I, I do, I do believe him. It rings very true to me. As someone who's lived these systems, who understands these systems very, very intimately, it all rings completely true to me. And I possibly could have said this a while ago, but again, I didn't want to because I, I wanted to wait and see what was said. You know, I don't like to speculate. Yes, it's something I recognise. Yes, it's something I feared being something that would be revealed. But 
I didn't really want to talk about that. So watch how the victim is, is now being framed as the villain for talking about the abuse. No, that's not how it should work, right? If someone has assaulted you, you the victim doesn't need to be sitting there thinking, oh no, what if I what if I cause trouble for everyone by by standing up for myself and advocating for myself? No, we don't want to live in that world. And the BBC were just openly airing that. Openly. Disgusting. Oh, and I don't see how Harry will ever be able to come back from this. Come back from what? From talking about the fact he was assaulted. So you're victim blaming. You're victim blaming on the television, on the BBC. What about how William will come back from this, from actually attacking his brother? It's like the physical assault element, the domestic abuse element, because that's what it is. It is coercive control, it's psychological abuse, it's, it's physical abuse. That's fine. Harry's the villain for bringing it up. They haven't learned anything from Savile. This is Savile again, right? They've learned absolutely nothing. Uh, Emily Nash, uh, a, a royal editor of Hello Mag Magazine. Wow, she's so qualified to talk on this, isn't she? And the etiquette expert, so qualified to talk on these complex matters, of course. To put up such intimate private information, a level of betrayal felt by the royal family. And this is again twisting it. Harry has said he is only doing this, first of all, he would have a right to do this anyway. If you're an abused person, you have a right to talk about that. You have a right as a victim to do that. Nobody can stop you doing that. Nobody should be able to stop you doing that. Let's not forget, they're retwisting it. Oh, Harry's fired the first grenade here. You know, Harry's pushed. No, Harry is saying that he's doing this because we know the royal family have been leaking. William's team have been leaking things against Harry. And that's part of the coercive control. Anyone who understands these abusive systems will see that's coercive control. That's abuse even from a distance. So when Harry and Meghan removed themselves, it was a control of them. It was a threat. It was intimidation from afar. Leaks were coming out in William's favour to villainise Harry. And that's part of the abuse process. That's part of the scapegoating. That's part of the punishment. That's part of what happened. So he's responding to that. And the BBC are doing a great disservice to every single victim watching. And I'm absolutely appalled to frame it in this manner. We've also got them saying, oh, obviously there's a huge amount of hurt on both sides. Don't, on the BBC, both sides a situation of abuse. Don't do that. Why? Just because William's a famous person. William was born in, he's just a normal guy. And, and two, and I think thinking empathetically, he's not had an easy time as well. He's very traumatised as well. Although it's very interesting that they're now using, um, some people are trying to say, well, you know, we should pity Harry really for doing all this because he's obviously very traumatised. You know, he's probably mad and unstable. Remember that's, they tried to do that with Diana. No, he's not mad and unstable. He's not unstable. They always say that about victims. You know, victims, oh, he's unstable. We never see that argument uh, used in the terms of, well, maybe the trauma that William as well suffered has turned him into an abusive person. That's, that's never argued, is it? So it's not fair, it's clearly biased. We also see Harry talking about his own life and experiences as being described by this Emily Nash as tit for tat, tit for tat approach. I want to know why the BBC got these people on and they didn't get domestic violence experts. Why did they not? This is a victim coming forward about abuse. And the BBC is further victimising this person. They are further scapegoating and harming somebody who's come forward about abuse. It's absolutely disgusting. And if you understand abuse systems, you can see it clear as day. You can absolutely see it. There's so much more I could say about this, but I do not want to speculate. I will wait until I read it. But what we are clearly seeing is we are seeing abuse. I'm, I want to read you some tweets that I made about this because I tend to articulate better when I write than when I speak. So I said this, it doesn't surprise me that Harry may be alleging physical abuse. This often comes after emotional and psychological abuse and is all about control. It isn't about consistent physical attacks, but when the abuser snaps in a rage. Physical abuse can often be more minor and part of a pattern of intense emotional abuse. Someone who isn't usually violent may turn that way when they lose control. It is all about control and all about dominance. These moments of physical violence may be fleeting and the abuser may feel ashamed afterwards, but the memory of this capability in the abuser is another way to psychologically intimidate the victim who fears this escalation in the future. There are a lot more cases than are spoken about where domestic violence or abuse is majority psychological, emotional and occasionally physical. It's difficult for these victims to get help because they are not routinely physically hurt and the offender may express shame afterwards. Victims are more likely to dismiss this form of abuse because it's not battery and comes from an emotional rage spike. We associate physical abuse with constant physical attacks and we are often emotionally conditioned to pity the abuser. As we have seen from many of the ill-informed responses already, when the violence is rarer than the psychological abuse, victims will be told it isn't a big deal and that we all lose our tempers sometimes. Victims fear being belittled. 
And that's what we're seeing here. We are seeing physical abuse belittled. And I just wanted to speak very briefly. I'll make a proper video about this. This is going to be too long to edit. But when you see coercive control, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, you will often see situations where there is physical abuse, but it's fleeting. And the physical abuse isn't... We live in a society where we don't understand domestic violence and what it means. Domestic violence isn't always physical. So sometimes in psychological abuse or coercive control, violence will come out as a threat and it's when somebody snaps because they can't control you anymore. And it's very difficult for these victims to come forward because they're not being routinely hit. They're not being routinely beaten up. But the fact that it happens sometimes and that the rage is there works as intimidation because that person is then always thinking even if it's only happened a few times that person is always sitting there thinking how can i stop that happening again that's always working as a threat so often in in complex abuse dynamics when it comes to psychological abuse it's not constant violence it's occasional violence and the victim is always told that they uh, push the abuser to it it's always excused so that puts the victim into a state of fear and it also belittles them because especially for men coming forward and, and with women too, but especially for men coming forward, I am absolutely disgusted with the amount of people that I've seen saying, I'm sure he can take it. You know, he was in the military. like I'm sure he can take being hit or something. What does that even mean? That's toxic masculinity in action, right? We're saying that it's okay to abuse somebody because they're a man, because they're physically stronger. Is that really the mentality that we want to have in 2023? That it's okay for men to be assaulted? Anybody can be a victim of abuse. These systems are complex and people who don't live them, people who don't understand them, are doing so much harm because this take away the celebrity element to this, okay? I guarantee you everybody who's been abused is being abused or understands these systems is reading this. And people are watching this victim blaming and their hearts are just breaking because people are outing themselves as unsafe. You don't know any of these people who want to try and belittle what's happened to Harry and Meghan. You don't know which of your friends are going through this. And in that moment, they've seen your response and thought, wow, they're going to blame me. Or worse, they're watching this and they're thinking, you know what? They only hit me a couple of times. You know, maybe I should just grow up. You know, how many men are reading that and thinking, well, you know, I'm quite, I'm a, I'm a strong, capable man. Maybe I'll look weak. I should be able to deal with it. You know, how many people are going through that? It's absolutely disgusting. And the BBC are part of this. People do not understand abuse. They do not understand domestic violence. And this is why people get trapped in these cycles. This is why people don't leave. People ask, why don't people leave? Because it's not so simple always as someone being routinely beaten, okay? It can be a psychological attack. It's being made to feel lesser. It's being a scapegoat. It's these threats. It, I could really go on about this and I will. I'll talk about it in more depth later. The BBC are complicit and they have been complicit, just as Harry and Meghan said, in this abuse system. They have taken part in domestic violence and coercive control and they're still doing it. They are re-victimising a whistleblower that's come forward. This is not unbiased. If they were unbiased as they claim to be, they would say, oh, Harry's alleged this and there's no statement from the palace. Instead, they are recruiting people in to humiliate the victim to make him seem crazy or like he's the villain. I'm absolutely disgusted. I've never been so disgusted with the BBC and I was disgusted with the way that they tried to destroy Jeremy Corbyn um, when Jeremy Corbyn was the leader of the Labour Party. But this is the most disgusting thing I think I've ever seen from them since the Savile situation, I think. Let's also briefly put a couple of things into context that I wanted to say here. There's some more things that I want to get into, but I probably shouldn't, so I won't. There's a few things I've noticed. I, I, you know, I don't want to speculate. I don't want to be that sort of person. But let's look at some things here. William went to Harry when he was on his own. He called uh, Meghan abrasive, right? He acted like, and you know, that that rings very true because abusers are very threatened by people who can advocate for themselves. And more than that, if Harry's being abused in this system, then they are going to want him alienated from somebody who will advocate for him and somebody who has his back. That's part of the process. That's why he went when Meghan was not there. That is why he also did not want Megan told about this because that is what abusers do. And again, what abusers do is they project. So they put out this story that, oh, Megan's a bully. Megan is bullying people. That's part of the abuse. That's part of trying to alienate Harry from his support network. That's trying to make him be quiet and to toe the line. We will destroy her. We have the power to twist the narrative. So don't you dare come forward and say anything because this is what we can do and we will do this to you. This is what we've been seeing. This is what they've been dealing with. When Megan backed away at the funeral, when the four of them were there, I completely understand it now. The body language makes complete sense. Of course she's intimidated. If you know that people are capable of physical violence, 
you are going to be intimidated. It makes complete sense. And so many, I just want to say as well, so many people in the public eye, so many media figures are saying they knew about this and it was covered up. It completely backs up. The BBC, there needs to be an investigation because the media and the BBC have been complicit in the abuse. They have been complicit. They're supposed to be unbiased and they are re-traumatising a victim that's brave enough to come forward. And then I just want to say quickly, I put the TV on this morning and on ITV they were doing the same thing on this morning. Doesn't surprise me, they've gone right wing as hell. But um, guess who they had, of course, the experts they had on to deal with. They didn't go to people who are experts in domestic violence, in abuse systems. They didn't go to anything like that, of course. Um, they had Carol Vorderman and Giles Brandreth on. And uh, surprise, surprise, what did they have to say? This was another a hit piece. Apparently him talking about his time in the military is a betrayal of the people in the military with him. Um, I don't know for sure, was Carol Vorderman in the military? Was Giles Brandreth in the military? Um, that's interesting. Uh, Giles Brandreth says one of the reasons he went to California was privacy, which is a lie. And we all know it's a lie and they know it's a lie. Um, and he's now saying that's a reason why he shouldn't come forward and talk about the fact he was abused. So it's a lie anyway. But even if that was why he'd gone, uh, you know, he's allowed to talk about the abuse he suffered. Carol Vorderman says here, every family has bouts or rifts that go on for a year or more or less. It's the swings and roundabouts of family life. Yes, they do. They have arguments. They don't physically assault each other. They don't coercively control each other. Anyone who can't see that what happened was an insidious part of very late stage control it's completely lost and do not understand and it's irresponsible for them to be on the television talking about this this is late stage she also says that the great danger here is that it's going to get worse because of harry so this is what itv and the bbc are saying to abuse victims that apparently if you come forward about your abuse you're going to make it worse and in fact you're abusing your abuser that's davo and these are our main channels and this when i say we've lost our media in this country they're completely consumed. They've been taken. Giles Brandreth says this, it's the English way is not to have a conversation, but to move on. So now Harry's being un-English apparently. If that the English way is to accept abuse, maybe it has been. Stiff upper lip has always been the way we've dealt with abuse things here. That shouldn't be the case. And sorry, how dare you both sit there? <laughs> how d I'm really angry about it and say, oh, it's not the English way. So there's no focus. Really think about this. Who has been taking the most flack? All this has come out, right? These allegations have been made. And who's being examined here? The victim is. Harry's being examined. People are saying he deserved it. Good on William. People are acting like he's crazy. People are acting like he's weak because he didn't fight back. Where's the focus on William from the media? Where is it? It's victim blaming. It's disgusting. And then to top it all off, they then started laughing about Harry's story of how he lost his virginity. And they were just laughing and humiliating him about it. They were just... They... I am just disgusted. We've lost our media. They are blaming victims. I'm so, so sorry to anybody who's been a victim or who is a victim, who is seeing all this taking place. And and it is disgusting. And this is what we stand up against. You know, this is the system. These are the systems. Um, but I know that it, just know in your heart that if you can see it and you understand it, then you are one of the lucky ones because you have the chance of changing and getting out. You're not gonna be perpetuating the system. You're a good person with empathy. You understand others. Their voices are very loud. Um, I don't know how much power we have here, but I just wanted to make this video because I'm just disgusted. It's gutting to see this and so many people just going along with it. And I wonder how many people and how many men are seeing this, seeing Harry humiliated, called weak, saying that he can't have been hurt, uh, he should have fought back, he was in the military, he's stronger, I'm sure he could have held his own. How many men that are being abused are now deciding maybe I'm not going to say anything? Just makes me feel sick. But anyway, um, I love you loads. I'll see you really soon. I am going to talk about this in way more depth. There's so many things to talk about here, but I just wanted to get this out there this morning. So love you loads and I'll see you really soon. Bye.